Hi everybody, so in video 1877 we made this thing which is a maglev turbine with a squirrel cage on top and it works pretty well when the wind blows in that direction as we saw in video 1877. Now it was a uh, William Tithus, who suggested this, and thank you very much, William, because I think we're very much on the same page, said, well, what I noticed, Rob, was that these vanes here, they have an aerodynamic shape, and yes, they do, they have a curve like a wing. So they will capture the wind in a drag, which is how these kind of turbines work. They're basically hitting little buckets and pushing it around. And of course, because it's a wing, then we're getting the wing flow on the other side, because wings create lift. And it doesn't really matter that much where that wind direction is. When we bring it in one direction, it'll turn the other way. We put it in the other direction, it'll turn the counter uh, rotation way. So, lots of information all of a sudden, but why bother choosing this? Why not just use something more appropriate? You know, like maybe an Agrinsky or something like that. Well, I obviously have a plan for this, and I'm kind of working toward that plan. And I like these squirrel cage rotors, which you can get from like a ton of places. I mean, you get them from air conditioning units, tower fans. So although we 3D printed this, you don't need to. You can replicate this just by finding yourself a squirrel cage rotor and then building this generator section on it. And you'll, you'll have the same thing without a 3D printer, which is exactly why I did it this way. Because you have your choice. You can choose to 3D print it, which is what I've done. Or you can actually make it out of other bits and pieces. And I've also done videos where I've made these kind of turbines from squirrel cage rotors by hand from equipment around. So there's lots of choices about this. But the main reason I did it this way is I'm going to show you now. It's kind of fascinating. What I've got, where are we? Here we go, is a fan. And I'm going to blow that air straight down. And what I want you to look at is that there, that little LED. So let's do that. <laughs> Geronimo! Look at that! That's actually pretty awesome. Okay, that, that was pretty awesome. It works if you blow the wind that way. It works if you blow the wind that way. And it, and it would do, because all these squirrel cage fan rotors have the same aerodynamic wing shape to them. If you look at them, you'll see they've got a slight curve to them. So they're all the same, really. There's no real advantage to 3D printing as to finding one yourself in, in, in uh, theoretical terms. In practical terms, it is much easier with the 3D printing because you just set the print going and leave it alone and you, you come back to it with the actual rotor itself. You're going to have to build it, but you can build it. It's not really a problem, 3D printer or not. But that aside, it works both ways. Now, I don't know if you remember the Waters turbine. Mike Waters invented this turbine and Mike's actually a friend of mine. Uh, and uh, he's got a ton of proof how much better this turbine is. And it is, it's a brilliant piece of work that gets not the recognition it deserves because the issue with it is, oh, it's a great big circle. And of course, hanging those up in the air, that's kind of difficult. It's much easier if it's just sat down on the ground like that. But of course, it works better if you have a stream of air that you're pointing the thing at. Now, that's one way of looking at it. One way of looking at it is to point the turbine at the air. The other way, <laughs> is to point the air at the turbine. Of course, we have this we've been playing with. This is the Darwin turbine that was won in the competition. And incidentally, it was won by Daniel Tissington, who has still to send me an email. Daniel, let me know where you are so I can send you this. In the meanwhile, we've still got this. It's still, it's still sitting here. It's a slightly small version. But of course, what it does is collects the air from every which way and points it one way, straight down here. So conceptually, here's the idea. We take the Darwin wind turbine, we sit it straight on top of the waters turbine, and what we've got is perhaps one of the best wind turbines in the world that we'll be able to do that with. Now there's a couple of things we need to do. We need to make a bigger version of the Darwin wind turbine, obviously sit on here and point in there. And if you look at the waters turbine, what you'll find is that the centre of here has a kind of cone shape to it. It's a, a, a hyperbolic cone, I think. So it comes like that. So we need to make a hyperbolic cone. We need to make a big old Darwin wind turbine to sit on top. That will just blow the air straight down in there. The airfoil will give it a push because it's actually lift and that lift is constrained in that direction. And so we can put that whole section in a shroud to prevent it being um, interfered with and the wind will come down and blow out and turn it and it should be 
super efficient. So I'm really quite excited by that as a way to go. Of course, there are always ways to go with these things and there are lots of choices you can make about them. All I'm talking about is the choices that I'm making in order to get an efficient wind capture device that can generate all in one. So that's where we're going with it. I wanted to point that out to you because lots of great comments, of course, from people on um, video 1877. Keep them coming, guys, because you're an inspiration to me. Thank you very much for watching this one. Hope you enjoyed it. And please do remember to like and subscribe.